Good afternoon, everyone. Um, on behalf of Joseph Petito and Nicole Schmidt, uh, we just want to express our thank you to Judge Carroll for the time he gave us today on the motion. We appreciate the time it's going to take him to make <clears throat> his decision, uh, and we have no doubt that he will make the correct decision. Uh, the, the family will not be taking any questions, but I'll do my best to answer a few questions if you'd like. How do you think that, how do you think the um, court hearing went today? I was very satisfied and pleased with the question the judge asked in particular about the statement that Mr. Bertol <clears throat> Mr. Bertolino made on behalf of the Laundry family because that is uh, that says a lot, the fact that uh, they knew she was deceased, they knew where her body was located, and they had the audacity uh, to express a hope that she would be reunited with her family. How is the family holding up through all this? Um, as best I can tell, they're, they're, they're handling them as best they can. Uh, if you saw, uh, there were some tears earlier today when we came in, <clears throat> in here. And I expect there will likely be some more tears. I know that the family is communicating, but I noticed that Paul was holding on to her necklace. Are you able to share what that, if there's a meaning behind it? It's Gabby's ashes. I'm sorry? As a card. Oh, it's a, it's a mass card. It's a, um, a drawing or a, a piece of art that someone from Australia, I believe, created utilizing a picture of Gabby. And on the back of it is a prayer that Jim wrote. The defense read, uh, alleged that they had a Fifth Amendment right, even though there was no uh, criminal allegations. How do you feel about that? I heard you arguing about that in the uh, motion to dismiss. Well, there, doesn't, there has to be an investigation or a crime before the Fifth Amendment right applies. I don't know. And I'm waiting for the day for the laundries to tell us what crimes they committed. Uh, hopefully they'll do that someday. But I don't know what crimes uh, they, they are asserting were uh, committed. We did allege that they were trying to, to, to move some money around and get Brian out of the country. But there was no arrest warrant out for Brian. He wasn't a fugitive. From a, a criminal law perspective, I don't think that there was anything inappropriate about what they were doing at that point. Uh, I, I think for the Petito family, it was a relief. Um, but I would like to have had them be in the courtroom and face the people that they caused harm to. How confident are you this will go in the favor? Well, I, as I said, I like the questions the judge was asking opposing counsel about the statement that Mr. Bertolino made. If someone doesn't find his statements, knowing all the facts that, that were known to the laundries at that time, if somebody doesn't find that offensive and then outrageous, I don't know what's outrageous. Did you read anything into the judge saying only two weeks to give a decision? No. That's, judges typically take cases under advisement when there's a lot of research and a lot of cases cited, and so I'm not surprised by that at all. I'm surprised it's only two weeks. All right. Thank you, everyone.